Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a preset tutorial talking about uh, delay for preset to delay the animation that is done inside the geometry nodes. So let's start. So here we are in Blender. At the first, I have to kindly remind you that today's topic is not about offsetting animations that are done outside Blender. For example, I have uh, an amateur and rig downloaded from Mixamo. And uh, this is basically a fallback dash animation. And I want to instance it and uh, delay the rigs so that I have uh, multiple amateurs dying uh, in this shot. And uh, this is not possible in geometry nodes simply because geometry nodes has no access to all these kind of armatures and the keyframes there are potential ways that can be implemented to solve these kind of functions however i do not see that coming in any time short so it may take several years or maybe several months you never know but that's not possible currently, up to my knowledge. If you're looking for procedural ways to do such kind of functions of uh, instancing and offset different uh, amateur animations, you may try to look for an add-on called the Animation Nodes, which basically replaces Python scripting in Blender. And uh, this node tree technically works. For example, I'm instancing these amateurs into five, and they are falling one by one. And you can also try to use random uh, random number to have a different delay so that they are falling at a different time. Because this is a procedural so that you can increase the different amounts of armatures so that they are falling at the different times, whatever stuff. But anyway, this is a different node system. It has a different learning curve. It's kind of complicated and it can be kind of very slow according to the amount you're instancing. And uh, just the replicating this node tree by itself is actually not going to be meaningful because in reality, it's not just about the armature, but also the skin attached to it. So it's going to be very complicated. Here, I'm just giving you a hint, but I do not actually recommend you to study this system. You may try other software or other add-ons or other functions anyway, but that's not a topic today. So we are just going to disregard it and move on with our real topic about geometry nodes. So here, this is a very simple uh, geometry node setup that uh, I have a mesh line. Uh, which contains 10 points and I'm instancing a cube on each of the points. And my goal is to use translate instance node to move these cubes to somewhere. And in this case, we can definitely just uh, right click and insert a keyframe to move them. But my goal is to actually move them one by one. So I cannot just simply insert a keyframe because it will just move everything as a whole. So how can I delay uh, this animation? The basic principle of a delay animation is basically just to do a simple math of a subtraction. Here we need to combine XYZ to uh, make Z axis accessible for this kind of simple math. And let's take a value node so that we can keyframe uh, from 0 to 10 for this animation. And the plugging that to the Z axis so we have a nice animation from 0 to 10. And we need to subtract this value with a certain number. Very commonly, this is going to be an index. And we can't index from 0 in computer. And uh, this is the first point, second point, third point, fourth point, and so on for this index. And once we subtract that, you can see there is an immediate offset of animation. And obviously, we are not reaching our goal of 10 meters high. 
because of this subtraction. So what we can actually do is just to increase this value a little bit higher. And so we want to eliminate all this kind of negative value. And we also want to eliminate all these kind of values higher than 10 meters. So what we are going to do is just to clamp these values. So we clamp out the negative value. We also improve. And we also increase the maximum to be 10 meters. So now we have an animation from 0 to 10 and they are being delayed correctly. This is the basic concept of it. In reality, there are many more things that you can potentially do. For example, right now we are subtracting index, which uh, going from step to step uh, with a kind of one difference. But you can have a kind of multiplier of this index so that uh, either they are delaying more or they are delaying less with this multiplier. And uh, instead of keyframing uh, this value every time, you can also use a same time node to replace this kind of function so that your animation can always go to infinite and uh, with different kinds of a delay as long as your timeline is going, okay? And with the clamp, you can actually map how much distance you can actually go. As I finish the, the basics part of it, let's talk about uh, the delay ball preset I want to show you today. As always, you can download the presets for free from the link in the description. Uh, this is a delay fault node, and the fault is basically a value going from 0 to 1 according to the condition. In this case, this fault value is driven by time, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, it's delayed with the index according to the step interval which is the multiplier of this delay. So the end result is that this cube is moving from 0 to 1 uh, by 25 frames of duration. Okay. And uh, in order to recover the previous animation, we need to remap 0 to 1. And let's make that into 10. So we recover the previous animation. This remap 0 to 1 is basically just a simplified version of a map range node. Okay. And uh, if you want to make the delay more exaggerated, you can just uh, turn on this step interval to a higher value, as I showed earlier. You can make the animation go faster by decreasing this duration. For example, if the duration is just a 5, then you have a very fast animation. If this duration goes to 35, then you're going to have a very slow animation. Okay, And uh, by default, this uh, delay fault is interpolating this fault value with an is is function. So this is like when you're keyframing uh, stuff, then there will be automatic is uh, is function being applied. But if you turn off this ECS function, then everything will just become very linear. Okay. Uh, the good part of having a linear interpolation is that uh, you can map this animation with your own curve. For example, I can have this kind of curve. And then, boom, boom this is basically it. This is why the fault has to be defined between 0 to 1 so that you can remap with the float curve and you can turn the values afterwards. One of the last uh, setting I want to discuss here is this delay time option. So this delay fault by default is delaying based on the index and its step interval. But sometimes your scene starts maybe 100 frames. And uh, the entire setup, because it's running on the time, so it's already being delayed. So in this case, what you want to do is to just uh, make the start frame 100. So you delay the entire action by 100 using this delay time option. Okay. This is also a separate 
a secondary delay that you can use. For example, this step interval is quite um, organized. But if you want to add uh, some additional random delay, you can just put a random value node in additional to the previous 100 value offset. And you can increase this value a little bit so that there are little bits of randomization. A little bit of randomization. So you can see there, there are certain kinds of, um, I'm not sure if you can actually see. For example, they are running one by one, but there are cases they are basically going together. So these kind of variations sometimes can be a little bit interesting for an animation. So this is the way to use that. Okay. The last setting I want to discuss is this loop factor. Uh, sometimes you finish this entire animation and you realize your uh, object just stops because it's supposed to. But sometimes when you're emitting particles using this delay fall, then you may want to loop that. For example, in this case, let's just delete this float code. So you can see this animation continues forever. If you think this is a little bit too fast, you can increase the loop factor to be two so that it will stop for a while and then loop again. So sometimes if you aren't satisfied with that, then just increase the amount of loop factor so that it will stop for quite a long time and it goes over the entire process again. Okay, so this is the concept. So far, our example is just uh, offsetting the animation to move the cubes. But this delay fall can be actually used in many other places, such as the emitting particles. Here, let's just go to another node tree to emit the particles. And uh, you do not need to worry about all these kind of nodes. It's just uh, having a rod and a random transform our rods into different places. And uh, what's really important is that I'm emitting these entire particles to the space. And uh, this scale is going from 0 to 1 to 0. That's why it disappears at the end. And uh, this is uh, completely procedural. So you can change all these kind of parameters in real time. There's no real simulation being involved anywhere. Okay. But uh, here I want to remind you one thing that's because we are working based on the index. So their order is pretty predictable. Sometimes you want to randomize this entire order, so you need an index randomize. An index randomize, yes. And it basically just randomizes the index as you go. But it's not working in this case because you lose all the kind of delay. Why is that? This is because we are working with instances instances and instances. So you want to change the domain from point to instance so that you can recover this kind of delay and you can change the seed so that you can see different orders are being applied to all these kind of points. You can change the target, target repeat so that uh, um, hopefully there are five points uh, being emitted at the same time it's probably not very easy to visualize in this example, but basically this is the concept of it. Uh, let's increase the step interval a little bit more. So you can see there are five points being emitted at the same time. And the next five points, or roughly five points, it's not super accurate, but you can get a kind of a rough result on it. And basically this is the concept. And there's uh, some additional outputs from this delay fall. And this is our third example of trimming curves. I have talked about a similar kind of setup in my Meteor uh, tutorial. Uh, in this case, basically, I'm still having a kind of curves. And the set, a set of position is just to remap uh, its kind of arc. And I'm instance that's using random transform node again. 
so that I have this kind of whatever stuff. I need to realize the instance so that each curve can be trained differently with this delay four. So I just put a fourth number into uh, the end. And uh, if I play this animation, you can see these lines are just uh, being shooted. And sometimes you can mimic that into a kind of missile tracer or laser beam attack, or whatever stuff. Uh, it looks kind of very cool, actually. But uh, the issue is that you do not need to only shoot the laser beam. You also need to make that disappear. So this is the time function do. It basically, it's basically a time to subtract the existing offset so that to get a different time. This time can be used to remap another thing. So to start with another animation, so for example, if I take this time and I set the duration to 25 and I plug that to start, you can see I do not only shoot the curve, but I also make it disappear. So basically this is the use of it. It really looks kind of missile attacks. Uh, but uh, this is basically the idea. Uh, in reality, this map range also has its time ball node version, which you do not only have the duration, but you can also delay. So that's uh, when you are shooting these lasers or missiles, you are also trimming that at the same time with this delay. It's actually just um, some simple math with uh, our time. But basically, this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.